what has been influential on my development as a teacher? Uh, well, I, I think that uh, one thing would be um, student feedback. Uh, student feedback in terms of um, the questionnaire returns I've just described. We have an institutional level, um, course level, sorry, it's, a, it's an institutionally run course level instrument, which is, you know, hit and miss. Students aren't always motivated to complete it in, in much detail. So uh, this supplementary exit survey was very useful in, in terms of uh, increasing stream f uh, feedback from students. Um, so that's been very helpful. Every time with my course, I try and, and change in accordance with what I can see is the dominant voices coming through. There's one course I teach in, in the modern world. I've changed it every year. I'm going to change it again this year, you know, because um, the students I sense are changing. You know, this is part of the history of youth. You, you're kind of tracing the way in which expectations, uh, assumptions are changing over time. I've seen an enormous change in Hong Kong students since 2001 when I started teaching to, to today. They are utterly different in terms of their approach to learning. They have completely different expectations. They have been, I should say, radicalized to a very significant extent. They used to be extraordinarily passive in the classroom. They had no real sense of what their expectations were. Now, I, I, can, I can run a seminar with very little input and uh, there will be very vigorous discussions. Uh, so I have to change my teaching in response to this, the changing views and approaches of students. So I, I, I'm changing that course to make to give even more space to uh, move even further away from the, the, the conventional lecture. I always felt that they needed a little bit of that structure in order to feel uh, in the first year of their program that they can make the transition from secondary learning to university learning. I, I no longer think that's the case. I'm moving my lectures online so I'm exploring ways of using technology to provide an engaging experience, one which is not linear, which is actually uh, which actually involves mul multiple choice and different pathways through the the, the lecture on an individual level, uh, and uh, that's in response to student feedback again. And they, they, I'm going to use the classroom time for something completely different, which will be um, opening up big discussions using primary documents and uh, and debating often with the role play dimension. I think. Um, the other thing would be my institutional experience. This is very, very much is transform the way I look at teaching because previously I had, a, you know, just simply the view of a teacher within a, within a single unit. But I, I, from 2008, I became associate dean uh, for curriculum development in the middle of a curriculum reform, and that exposed me to an awful lot of um, uh, administrative, high-level administrative discussion of. Um, programs of uh, what a curriculum should be. I, I ended up becoming the convener, that's kind of the organizer of um, the humanities area of the, of the new Common Core curriculum, which is a broadening program we introduced. It's been rolled out just uh, in the last two or three years. Uh, and conceiving of a, a humanities area, an entire area, involving courses contributed by teachers from 10 faculties uh, for students, primarily Chinese students, is an enormous uh, challenge and also it gave me a, a very different perspective on learning from the top down. You see, uh, so that's been those those two different ways have, have informed my uh, uh, approach to teaching.